Hi, I'm watching Freedom Machine and today I'm going to show you how to check the valve clearance on a Super Tenere 1200. So let's get straight into it. Um, to access the valves, we need to lift the tank, remove the airbox, uh, remove the throttle body, uh, ignition coils, spark plugs, and in general we need to make as much space as possible because it's going to be very tight to access um, the, the valves in general. So it's going to be a hard job. So if you, if you don't feel confident doing it, uh, take it to a mechanic uh, and get it done properly. As usual, to access the tank, we need to remove the side panels, covers, very easy on this side, only four screws. And this comes out. If you have crash bars, uh, covering the covers, then you need to remove the crash bars. Same goes for the other side. In this case, uh, we have normal screws, and a fast release. So, and uh, there are two buttons here on this side to snap fits here that we need to remove. And then the entire side panel will come off. You can use the same tip that you used. Remove the screws, push the middle in a little, and then you can pull out, you can pull them out. And the panel comes off. To lift the tank, we need to remove the seat. There are two screws on both sides. The tank. One. Two. There's a washer. Free up these two little hoses that go to the tank um, because when we lift the tank, we'll be pulling them. Now we can lift the tank slowly. And uh, we're going to hold it with some elastic bands. As I also mentioned in my service video, this elastic bands help to hold it in place. Otherwise, if you hit it while you're working on the bike, you might fall down. We remove this connector. So there is a little tab that you can press, push down. And this is free. Then we can, we have to free the, the, the belts that are uh, holding the, the air filter box to the throttle body and just few turns are enough here okay on this side the same belt the, the other belt is hidden a little bit but it's easy enough to access so on each side of the tank there are two screws We can remove. Now we can lift the air box. And there's a little hose connected here, the bottom. And uh, this is going to be really hard. You need, um, if you have a special tool to remove it, it's going to be easier. Um, I don't remember the name of this tool. Some special pliers. Okay, came off. So, 
I added a bit of light to the equation and before I continue I just put some paper in here so the dirt cannot go inside now we want to remove the uh, accelerator position coupler or connector um, so let's get this little hose out of the way so we remove the accelerator position coupler and the best way to do that is to use a screwdriver and pry the little tab a little bit and pull back <coughs> try from this side so push in the little tab push back the connector so this one is loose so we need to get the throttle position um, connector off that's another hard one so again Press in the little tab and push backward. These are really hard to remove. So be patient. Then we need to remove the throttle servo motor coupler, which is even more hidden. Let's see. We can get this out. The tab that you need to press is facing forward. So it's on the side and um, it's a little bit softer than the others, it's a small connector, but also this one we managed to remove. Then we need to remove uh, the two white injector couplers that are um, sitting at the, low, the bottom here. Um, again, there is a little tab to press at the bottom. And And we need to pull out. It's a white connector, grey, white. There is one on each side. So there's another one on this side. These ones are fairly easy. Then we need to remove the air intake pressure sensor coupler, which is this one. Now we have to loosen, uh, to, uh, we, we have to disconnect the, the accelerator and decelerator cables from the throttle body and um, to do that um, I decided to actually uh, loosen up the cable from here, uh, from the handlebars, so that then I can easily pull them out from there and remove them. Uh, it's very hard to work here in this area. On the service manual, I can really find the right procedure to remove the cables. So first thing we need to remove this rubber boot, pull it back. And then I did loosen them up before. Uh, just these little two screws. And pretty much the whole thing just falls apart. So and here we have access to the cables. Now we can turn this and uh, we can change this, pull it out sideways. So that's one cable. Then we go to the other side and we pull it out sideways. And these cables are now completely free. And we can pull them out from the other side. So, this is one cable. You can just pull it out sideways again. So then on the other cable, I turn this a little bit. Becomes really loose. We can pick it up, and let's see. Right. And again. Okay, anyway. 
came out. We have the two joint clamp and screws or so the belts they are more, very similar to the ones that we had between the air filter and um, the throttle body these ones are hard to access Let's see so, okay Okay, I'm gonna find a different tool later to put it back. Not completely, just needs to be loose. Another few turns. Same on the other side. I eventually managed by removing the camera. So there is now one connector left, which is not a connector, and that's actually the fuel hose. So there is a little uh, sting plastic piece that you can slide back. Then two buttons and push that back and uh, you will have some pedal flying around. Let's try that. There are now a bunch of cable ties that need to be removed, for instance here. Um, they are reusable, so you just lift a little tab and this is one, there's another one here, lift a little tab, and we'll see if there's another one somewhere else, I think this one we need to remove as well, and that's a different one. sort of belt okay so now in theory if I didn't forget anything we should be able to pull the throttle body out um, this is going to require a little bit of back and forward oops petal um, now I can pull this a little bit to the side and uh, we can loosen up the accelerator and throttle cable a little bit easier so make sure that you don't drop any dirt into the engine now at this stage um, so be very delicate when you do that Okay, throttle body out of the way. Let's put it somewhere clean. Same as before. Let's cover. So now we have to remove the ignition coils. So four ignition coils, one, two, three and four. So first of all we disconnect 
the cables same mechanism as all the other connectors press down the little uh, tab and pull back so that's one two three and four so now how will you know later which one is which um, every connector has different uh, color uh, one of the two cables has a different color so for instance the, the ignition coil the most on the left has an orange cable on the right side so one of the two cables is orange put it back here so then we take the second from the left and you see that it's gray and red then we take the third from the left and we see that we have orange and I think it's green orange and green and then the last one is gray gray and green so you just take a note of this and later you cannot mix them up they're all different and then we can start to remove the ignition coils and um, I use one of these let's try one of these usually I use swivel head or something okay that's one. Two. So let's remove all the screws these are off now we have to pull out the ignition coils this is going to be hard in my case I think because I have silicone could be hard no well the first one wasn't came out so I use some silicone to avoid uh, water entrance which was a big problem on gen 1 super tenor s Let's try with the second one. Came out fairly easy as well. Number three. And they're all the same, so there's no problem there. And four. So I don't still I still don't have a proper tool to get my spark plugs out, so what I normally do is a combination of adapters some tape so we have to remove now this engine bracket as this is going to be in the way Make a butt. Okay, easy. Okay, so we removed everything that we had to remove to get access, or almost everything. 
that we needed to get access to uh, the um, the cover here um valve cover now i noticed so there are a couple of other things that uh, you should do to make it easy and uh, but this is going to be a big big pain in the butt so you should remove this hoses clutch hoses and brake hoses whatever they are um because you're supposed to pull out the the um, the head from this side also these cables are in the way you need to loosen them up and um, so i just want to see how much room really i have before i do all of that because that's going to be a big big job then removing even the clutch hoses and so on but at this stage another problem that i noticed is that when i want to unscrew this my wrench doesn't fit with all the tip so it's touching the top here so it doesn't fit so what that means is that I might be able to remove it with some other tool but um, I might be able to remove it but um, when I want to put it back and I need to use the proper torque I cannot use the standard uh, wrench um, because it's not going to fit so that means and I don't have another torque wrench at this stage uh, that I can use so I need to figure out what tools uh, I can use to do that so it's late it's nine so I leave it for today and I continue uh, another day it is this is a big job it's going to take a lot of your time especially if it's the first time that you're doing it that's it for today uh, I'll continue maybe tomorrow so day number two with the uh, uh, valve clearance job uh, I'm gonna use a standard tool uh, basic because um, I didn't find I didn't find something uh, that I could use this one I tried to use it as a 90 degree adapter but uh, as soon as I went uh, a little bit stronger it broke there is a little gear in here and it's ideal because the torque that you apply at the input is what you get at the output but obviously um, it's not strong enough so I cannot use this so we go with the standard tool and then uh, when I have to um, you will see what I will do when I have to put it back together and apply the right torque. So I managed to loosen up this one already with the previous tool. Um, that was quite easy. Uh, and then when I tried to do the second one here, uh, it broke. So let's just keep on going here. The camera is in the way. Okay, that's inside and it was very easy right let's try to do this one here as well so there are six in total we have another one down here number three So I'm going with one hand from below. So I tried for a while, it's not coming out. Um, this hose is here for the brakes are in the way the clutch hose is in the way so i'm going to release them from here so one step at a time i'm trying now to follow the the guidelines from the service manual and see how far i need to go so this is something i need to remove so let's try to remove this one for now
So I also disconnect, uh, remove this uh, connector here from the this tube, and I passed all the cables between the the cover and uh, this tube. So now they are all on the top side. All the cables from the throttle body they are on the top side, uh, which gives me a little bit spice, space to slide it out. But um, let's let's try to release this. The other side. So this is moving. So all these cables here are terribly in the way. And um, the chain is higher, so this is causing the difficulty now. Other part that I took off is the, the holder for the brake front brake so this is bolt holding it there took this off because it was making pressure here on the cover let's see after this I freed up the hoses here I tried to pull them up a little um, I didn't do I didn't remove the cables like it's written in the manual uh, and uh, I'm getting there now the problem is going to be when I want to put it back. So this is out now. It is going to be a lot of fun when I want to put it back. So we're going to clean everything. Each screw has like a little washer. And um, one of them was loose. The other ones, they were sticking against the cover. But one of, one of them was loose and it actually fell into the... Uh, the spark plug uh, hole so um, don't do like me don't spin it around when you take it out just take it out flat and uh, put it somewhere otherwise you will be fishing out uh, these washers from from somewhere there is nothing else that can come off but uh, be careful with the washers so I'm cleaning the valve cover from all the old silicon um, so that then I can apply new new heat resistant silicon a week has passed and uh, I actually got to the point where I did all the, I removed the uh, valve cover and that, that's all filmed anyway, but I thought I'd go back in time because, um, and we get back to this stage where I'm actually trying to remove the, the valve cover from the, the engine because I played around a little bit with the valve cover here and I realized that putting it back is very, very hard. So I will have to make more space anyway so i thought okay let's let's just go back in time and we do the we, we remove everything that we have to remove from the very beginning so it will be easier for you guys so you can see that the valve valve cover is is gone at this stage um so other things that we need to do um to get to get better access uh first of all the the clutch hose here you need to disconnect it from the, the bike there's a little bolt and you can undo and there is a clamp and you can undo that and uh, it will loosen up this this um, hose here and in my case it's a little bit different because i uh, since i put the razors i did a modification that you can see in one of my videos and this is actually not going inside the clamp but in your case you will have to uh, take take off the clamp there um obviously we had to take out all the hoses from from this uh, little holder here they all go in there and um, this there was a little uh, strap belt holding everything together at the uh, bottom there holding the two together and uh, i took off that one as well so i took that hose here i lifted it and i brought it 
up outside out of the way so here now we have enough space from this side we're okay the problem is still there uh, I think if we can get rid of all these cables here that would will help a lot so it seems like this is an easier job than I thought because um, these cables here one goes here to this block and uh, it's just a matter of taking off this boot and uh, removing this little bolt um, and then the other one is actually the the other one is actually the battery the negative pole of the battery and on that note I one thing that you should always do is probably disconnect the battery anyway when you do a job like this one or anything else you should disconnect the battery uh, I didn't do it so uh, it's good if we do it now anyway it's a bit late for that but it's good if we do it so let's start by taking off the negative all of the battery here and these are two cables going to the negative of the battery you just pull that out from here and this one is free now let's take off this cable this cable is going to the starter engine or something like that anyway not looking into it just remove it put the bolt back so we don't lose it and this cable is gone as well oh there is another one so there is another cable here that I didn't notice that it wasn't together with the other ones just goes through here and it is this white connector here so it's very easy um, to remove you have to open this other uh, uh, zip tie here and uh, you can remove that one as well if you want and this one is from my heated grips I'm not going to remove that one so we made another little bit of space okay so now the valve cover is off and uh, the next step is measuring the valves before we can do so we need to put the valves in the right position so the right position for the valves in other words is the position where they're not pushing against the uh, the valves let's say um, so there is no force applied and this is where we will have a gap so to do that we need to access um, uh, the crankshaft here there is a little plastic cover and uh, there is a, a little screw plastic cover that you can easily take off and you will have access to the crankshaft so you can spin the crankshaft only clockwise so you have to spin it clockwise and if you look inside let's see if we can see that the light. there is on this on the on the crankshaft there is a letter K there and this need this letter pretty much needs to be pointing forward the line needs to be pointing forward and it needs to be flat with the ground in other words on the manual they will tell you that it needs to align it's another uh, thing that you can see here once you take off the cover we're not taking off the cover so um, just make sure it's flat with the ground so you can see it there so the order of checking the valves is first cylinder one and then cylinder two so if you look at the engine uh, from the top, uh, from the rider position, cylinder 1 is the one on the left, cylinder 2 is the one on the right. Um, to spin the crankshaft, obviously, you need to make sure that at least one spark plug per cylinder is, you take out one spark plug per cylinder so that you don't uh, have the compression happening, otherwise you won't be able to spin it. Uh, there is no need to take out all the four uh, spark plugs. So I did align that and now 
what we need to uh, check at this stage is if the lobes this lobe here is pointing backwards and the other lobe there lobes need to be pointing upwards so there are two lobes because there are four uh, valves per cylinder so uh, intake here the intake lobes need to be pointing backwards and the uh, uh, um, exhaust lobes or how you call them they need to be pointing upwards so this is the ideal position because they are not applying any pressure to the to the valves y you can see that on cylinder 2 uh, that's not the case on cylinder 2 um, the intake lobes are actually pushing on the on the valves so uh, we cannot measure those so now that we check that the lobes are in the right position we need to spin the crankshaft another 71 degrees um, so first uh, we check that the lobes are in the right position and uh, if not we need to spin it 360 degrees um, if they are in the right position we need to spin it 71 degrees before we can do the measurement at 71 degrees uh, there is a letter T that will align with the front the same way we, we did with the K so let's do that so. let's check where the letter T is almost you can see it there just another little bit Almost. and it's perfectly flat so let's see how the lobes look now so now the intake lobes are pointing upwards and the exhaust lobes are pointing upwards as well which makes it very easy for the measurement tool to uh, slide in. We are now ready to measure the, the valves, the valve clearance uh, on cylinder one. So we can measure intake and the uh, exhaust valves. To do that, you need one of these uh, gauge, uh, gap gauges or how you call them, filler gauges, whatever. These are little blades. Every blade, every blade has a different thickness. And uh, you need to be careful when you buy one of these because first of all, you don't want to buy rubbish, obviously. But uh, one thing that you want to make sure is that you get 0.01 millimeter resolution. Uh, the cheaper ones, they start at 0.05, which in some case you can make out if you are within range, if you're lucky. But in some other case, um, you, don't, you cannot measure exactly where you are. You can measure if you're in range, but you don't know exactly where you are. So the way this works is uh, there are a number of blades, different measurements, and there are, so it's this measure, this tool starts at 0 0.03 and ends up at one millimeter. Um, to do all the different measurements, you need to combine blades. So for instance, uh, it jumps from 0 0.10 to 0 0.13, so you can combine, I don't know, a 0 5 with the 0 6 to obtain uh, a 0 11. The best thing you should do is always combine two blades that are thicker instead of trying to achieve it with the thick blade and the uh, thin blade because then the thin blade will bend when you try to slide it into the valve. So, for instance, and also uh, consider that you can loosen it up here with this little thing most of the time, depending on the tool, I guess. But uh, if you have a hard time moving them around, then just loosen this one up, especially the thin blades. So if we want a 0 0.12, we take, if we take a 0, we take a 0 0.7, for instance, combine it with a 0 0.5. All right. That's our, that's our uh, 0 0.12 blade measurement. And then uh, if we want to go up, we combine a 0 0.5 with a 0 0.8 or a 0 0.6 with a 0 0.7. Anyway, like uh, you, you do the maths, but this is how it works. Never combine a thin blade with a thick bla blade anyway. So we're back at the bike now. Uh, for the intake, the manual is telling us that um, the valve has to be between 
uh, 0.10 and 0.16. Let's see if we can get the 0.10 blade in. And we go in from this side and just slide it underneath that, very easy. And clearly the 0.10 blade goes through very easy. The gap is for sure bigger than 0.10. So let's go up one and to go, um, actually let's go, let's go up to 0.13. We skip the ones where we have to combine the blades, maybe we're lucky. So let's go up to um, 0 0.13 millimeter blade and we are, it doesn't go through, it doesn't go through here. It does go through the other one. So the other one just goes barely through. So I suppose we are at 0 0.13, but this one is, is a bit tight. So let's, we have to combine them. So here we have the combination now in which we makes 0 0.12. Can we slide it through? No, they're still sticking. We try 0 0.11. It does go through barely. So now what we do is, um, so we say which one is the front. So it's the front of the bike. So we have all the cylinder one here, cylinder two here. So we have the valves, just do like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So far, this is the intake. So far we have measured this one, which is 0 0.11. And this is 0 0.13. Okay. So the exhaust valve needs to measure between 0 0.22 and 0 0.28. 0 0.23, it's very close to the minimum. So we can measure it from this side. So we have 0 0.23, the exhaust valve, doesn't go through that one. Doesn't go through this one. And you can measure it also from the other side. Again, doesn't go through, obviously, doesn't go through. So both valves are less than 0 0.23. Uh, which is obviously worrying because we know that at this stage it's going to be at the limit. Um, the next blade that we have is a 0 0.20. So 0 0.20 is one blade. Doesn't go through. It goes through this one. So the left one is definitely more than 0 0.20. Let's try 0 0.21 on the left one. It seems like it's going through tight. So we need to spin the engine twice, 360 degrees. I did spin it already once. And uh, we take another measurement of the of cylinder number one. Let's see, we start here and go around and we should come up. In the same position, but now the on the slip, so we need to be careful. Almost. And uh, so twice 360 degrees, so two rotations, and cylinder one will align again the same way it was before. T will be pointing forward on the crankshaft. So I did the third measurement just to be 100% sure and actually they all came out the same. So the only one, and that was probably my mistake, I got a 0 0.11 here but it was a 0 0.10. So uh, 0 0.01 out of spec, 0 0.04 out of spec, in spec on the limit, um, in limit. So to move on to cylinder number uh, two, we need to spin the crankshaft 270 degrees, which means that the T that is pointing now forwards needs to be three quarters of a turn. So the T needs to be pointing upwards after this. So 
So that's half, and then another quarter. Let's check it. Here is almost at the top, just another little bit. Okay, we'll be fine. Here is at the top, and the lobes and cylinder tool are aligned correctly now. Same as before, start with the intake lobes and. Uh, So now that we measured all the valves, we are ready to um, change change the shims. So to do that, shims which are the little uh, spacers that we can uh, can buy. You can buy different thicknesses to change the gap. Anyway, we'll get to that later. So to do that, we need to change the. We we need to remove the camshafts, and to remove the camshafts first, everything needs to align perfectly so that nothing weird happens. And to do that, um, the letter K needs to align perfectly to the floor, to the front, like we did before. And uh, so if you look inside this hole again, you can see the letter K there. And if you tilt the camera, you can see the mating point there. That line there is a mating point. So the letter K needs to point perfectly towards that mating point. If it does that, then you are in the right position. So then, the other marks that you need to check The other marks that you need to check are uh, So there is, there, is, there is this little hole here On the camshaft, there is a little hole there that needs to align with this other little uh, dimple there, how you call it You know, with that little thing there So they need to be aligned And then, as a last check and there are two lines There are two lines on the pockets of the camshafts that need to align with the surface of the piston So not with the with the floor, but with the surface of the piston which is which is tilted obviously since the engine engine is tilted forward You can remove four screws here and this will move and then you can look there at the pockets. It's gonna be hard now for me to show you this one with the camera but uh, you go in with the torch with the light and you will see two lines one on each side one on each spocket that will align perfectly with uh, with the engine um, anyway once you check once you put the K in the right position and that little hole on the camshaft is in the right position uh, and, and carefully has to be the intake camshaft I didn't even check if there is one on the exhaust camshaft I doubt anyway so uh, that hole needs to be aligned and if that hole is aligned then it's, all, it's obvious that also the, the the camshafts are aligned correctly um, but nevertheless do that check just to be 100 percent sure and uh, so then the next step is to remove the chain tensioner so this is the chain tensioner here the two um, little bolts we have to remove one, and obviously, obviously it's not easy to access. Second bolt because there is a frame in between. Again, need something special. So for the second one, we use this one. Can access between this triangle that we have here and just loosen it up a little then we can go in from this side then and this is out the gasket came with it. Obviously, the intake pocket skipped uh, because uh, there was there is a little bit of pressure applied to these lobes. So when I released the chain tensioner, it skipped. We are going to deal with that later when we have to put it back together. I was not hoping to keep all of that aligned. So we are ready to remove the camshafts. But before we do that, let's secure the chain. 
let's secure the chain to the the frame so it won't fall inside the bike now we're finally ready to remove the camshafts and the, there are six balls holding each one of the camshafts um, you should undo them one little bit at a time to avoid damage damaging the cylinder head Get ready to take these out. Now these ones you want to really keep them in the right position. So from the I have already, I will show you later. I have everything organized here from the left. It's one. You have to move it around a little bit. Two. And anyway, they have letters on them. So the first one is uh, has uh, they are labeled. The first one is F two, F three. <laughs> so I'm preparing myself here. Intake all the screws from the left. Then we have uh, F two. This is labeled. F2 here and there is an arrow pointing to the right this arrow is telling you that the sprocket is on the right or whatever this arrow when you put it back has to point to the right of the bike same here arrow pointing to the right and this has a, the letter F3 here letter the label F3 and then again here arrow to the right and there is no letter here no reference but this is bigger it's different than this too like an idiot i the most important part i didn't press play so i took out the camshaft but that's actually very easy at that stage because uh you just move away the chain to the side a little bit which is not complicated at all and then you just lift out this pocket and this comes out it shouldn't really be hard anyway you're going to see the same now with the exhaust I'm, I'm, I'm doing the exhaust from, from the front. Same as before. In this case, it's one piece. Comes out all together. Much easier, you can mess this up, put it down here, and let's move the chain out of the way here as well, very easy, and this will just lift out straight. Okay. We got to the point where we can actually take out the valve lifter and the, and the pad or the shim. But before we do that, we, we want to cover the, we want to cover the chain here, opening. Some, somehow like that. And we'll also put piece of paper like that in each one of the spark plug holes openings whatever so another thing that you want to do is prepare yourself a box like this one with different compartments you need eight compartments label it some way that is clear to you so i have here cylinder number one cylinder cylinder number two and then the the valves 
and uh, the front of the bike. So I know that these are the exhaust valves, intake valves, and I cannot mix up anything. So in each one of these containers, we will have the valve follower and the, the shim or the pad. So let's start with an easy one and to remove it, I will use a magnet. Bam. And I pull it out slowly. Pull it out. Put your hand underneath. Right. And the pad will most likely stick to the inside of the valve lifter. Okay, so we have them all in here. The pads, they actually st were sticking against the lifters, of course. So don't take them out and start to mess around with it. Play with one at a time, so you always know where you have to put it back. The pad is inside here. And uh, here we go. So this is a 205, for instance, which means that this... Uh, 2.05 millimeter thick so we have here our book our notes and uh, let's just start let's just start from this one top so we take the little pad take it out and we look at what number we have 198 198 let's write it outside 198 One nine eight. Let's take a second one. Two zero one. So the valve clearance was done, I guess, or um, I don't really know what the story is with this. Uh, I was reading that the origin, the ones that come with the bike, they don't follow the same uh, steps as the ones that you can actually buy. So we have two o one here. And then we have this one, which is 195, 195. So then we go to this one, which is 28. Let's close the box and we don't touch this until we get the, the new shims or pads. No need to touch this anymore. Um, so, so if you look at the manual now, it explains how to do all the mats uh, to get this done. Um, and it gives an example for when the valve clearance is loose. It doesn't give an example for when the valve clearance is uh, tight. And obviously, um, it's quite simple. It's the opposite of what it's written here when it's uh, tight. But uh, I, I guess instead of just looking at this and trying to understand this, just uh, use your logic. And uh, so if your valve clearance is tight, it means that your shim needs to be smaller than what you're having now at the moment for the specific valve. And if your uh, valve clearance is loose, which means that the gap is larger than what it should be, obviously your um, your shim needs to be thicker, it needs to be larger so that it can compensate. So for instance, here, if the, for the intake valve, it should be between 10 and 16. So let's say if your measured value is 20, obviously to bring it back in range, you need 0 0.04 millimeter to go from 20 to 16. So this is the difference that you have to go back in range. So let's say your shim, the shim on the the number on the shim that you pull out from the from the valve is um, 
the number is 148, that means that it's one millimeter and 48. Um, so to this, since the, since, the since the valve is loose, we need to add to this to make it tighter. And we need to add 0 0.04, which gives you 152 millimeter. So you should ideally, in an ideal world, you should have a shim of 152 with the number that is written 152 and that will bring you exactly to the limit of the uh, valve clearance, which is 0 0.16. Obviously that's not ideal because you want to bring it into the middle. So this number needs to be rounded then because as I mentioned earlier, you can only get increments by of 0 0.05. So if the, the last number that you get here is between 0, 1 and 2, you should round it to 0. If it's uh, between 3, 4, 5 and 6, you should round it to 5. If it's 7, 8, 9, you should round it to 10. Which means that in this case, we should take a valve a shame that has the number 150. I think it doesn't make sense because if you have a valve clearance that is loose, it means that it, it said the valve clearance is becoming loose for one reason or, or the other uh, for that specific valve. So um, by, by doing this rounding here, you're only uh, fixing this valve clearance by 0 0.02, which means that you are actually uh, not even going into uh, the specified value here, which should be 0 0.16, you will find yourself at 0 0.18. So you are still, if you follow this this uh, guideline here, you are still out of specification, uh, which I find very odd. Two weeks have passed and I ordered the parts from Fowler's uh, here in Ireland. Um, so that that's a UK company. If you are from the States, probably um, you can order them from Partzilla and they, they will be much cheaper than here in Europe. Uh, I think I paid something like 12 euro for a shim and I needed three because I moved around the old valve so I could fix the the gap. Uh, for instance, if we look, uh, so this is the old setup and this is the new setup, uh, exhaust valves, intake valves. So for instance, I moved this shim to this location here. Or if you look at the old setup, I moved it from here to here. So the gap that we had was uh, 0 0.10. And the shim that we had was um, 2.06. So by moving this shim here, I gained 0 0.05 millimeters, which I can add to the gap. So my new gap will be 0 0.15 just by moving the shim here. And uh, I did the same for all the others, trying to move them around in the best configuration possible. Obviously, in some case, it wasn't possible to move around the shims. For instance, this... Uh, this uh, valve here, I need to get a new one um, to fix the gap and I got the 195. So we had the 201 with the gap of 018, this needs to be 022. So by going from 201 to 195, we gain 0 0.06, which if I add to 018 makes 024 and we are within specification. Okay, so here are the three new shims that are OEM from Yamaha. So I'll put them aside. Uh, so now the easiest way to do that probably is to just move them around. So uh, we, we start from the top left corner here. Uh, 198 didn't go anywhere. So I just take it. And if we look at it, this is 198. I just throw it in here. This is not going anywhere. Then um, second one is a 201, 201, second one is a 201 that goes here. So I just put it here for now, 201. So the third from the top again was a 201 and it's written 201 on it. And this one goes here and I put it here. Then take this one. Top left, uh, top right, it's 195, and this goes here. So I put it here.
then we are um, lower left corner here this is a 208 and this didn't go anywhere so I just put it away this one again should be a 208 and it's a 208 didn't go anywhere I put it away then we have this one that is a 206 206 that goes here and then the last one which is a 205 goes to the lower left corner 205 goes here now we open the other ones that goes here this needs a 195 and then we have another 195 that goes here and then the last one is a 190 that we put here perfect and now I just put them back to the containers so in the right order and that's that done uh, now we just have to put them all together um, back into the bike so here we have the shim the pad and the valve lifter so um, on the manual it's saying that you should uh, lubricate the shim with the uh, molybdenum uh, disulfide uh, oil or how it's called uh, which is pretty much uh, something like moly grease mixed with uh, engine oil or something like that I have uh, I have the grease um, but I don't I'm not going to mix it or anything I'm just using going to use engine oil for everything so just make sure that you uh, put enough of this oil on onto the pad before installing it and uh, make sure you oil the the valve lifter um, as well and it should spin freely when you put it inside the the, the engine otherwise uh, it means that there is some problem so first we put in the the pad and just squeeze a little bit of oil there by the way if you use one of these pumps for oil that's going to make your life much easier and you're going to place the pad exactly in the middle make sure it's flat um, and not resting against the edge somehow so this is the first one intake and now we take the valve lifter all the parts have been cleaned earlier um, yeah try to be less messy and the first one is in and we do the same for all the others we are ready to uh, put back the camshafts before doing so we can take measurements of the lobes so you get measurements for the exhaust and the uh, intake this is the intake and you have measurements for the small part of the lobe and the large part of the lobe and obviously you have a range for the measurements so for instance let's take the the a bigger part of the lobe which should be between 40.25 and 40.35 so um, to do that you need uh, one of these tools you need several of these tools actually uh, usually they come in a set but for this measurement this one is enough and uh, if you don't have it I wouldn't worry about it because uh, it's very unlikely that um, these are out of specification on a Yamaha unless you have like probably over 150,000 kilometers um, so it's very easy uh, for instance this has to be over 40 so over four centimeters so we open the tool and we just make sure we hit it exactly in the middle here when we take the measurement. So we close it. And um, you don't spin it from the part where you put, apply force, but from the back here. And when it clicks, it means that this is the maximum force that you have to apply. And we are at 40.24, 25. And the measurements should be 40.25. So we are actually on the larger part of the lobe we are close to the lower limit but then the limit the real limit is 40.15 so these are fine still uh, if we measure the smaller part of the lobe this should be uh, between 29.97.6 and 30.076 so we go close to the three centimeter then again we hit it exactly in the middle 
and we take a measurement and we have 30.09 the the uh, larger limit should be 30.07 so i suppose that there is a little error in the tool or whatever i need to calibrate but anyway never mind we are within specification i'm not going to change this make sure that there is no blue discoloring there is no chipping or anything uh and you you're good to go so first thing make sure that the crank shaft is aligned and that hasn't changed so the k the line on the k needs to point perfectly towards b which is that mating point i was explaining earlier so this has moved perfectly in place so we start with the exhaust camshaft uh, obviously first thing we want to clean it so one thing that is important is this line that we couldn't see before this line is um that has to align with the the um, cylinder head or cil uh, piston head um the piston surface uh when we install it and the reason why we start with the exhaust um camshaft is because we install it and we make sure that the chain is tight and perfectly aligned with the cylinder head and then we can install the the intake camshaft uh, one thing I will do is now put a sign on the inside so that I can see it I can see where that line is from the other side so I will put exactly a sign on this side Let's see if this works so the line is here Clearly visible. Some people use sharpies or whatever, just use something that you can see. All the parts need to be oiled before you install it. All the part or the surfaces that are touching, obviously, you need to um, put some oil um, before, otherwise, the engine will start dry, and that's really not good. So, this is as clean as I could make it. So let's put a little bit of oil here, here, everywhere. Everywhere. And we need to pull out the chain. Chain goes over it, and this drops in, and then we need to make sure that that sign is aligned. I think I have it aligned. Let's just check the light. Yeah, the line that I did is straight with this surface here. We can uh, install the cap. Put some oil on it again. Just press in. There are some towels that are ha holding it. And uh, turn on the screws. Let's go first like that, just by hand a little. By the way, the line that is on the spot, it has to be aligned with the surface. It cannot be below. And uh, it cannot be about if it's a little bit higher, you won't be able to put down the camshaft properly because it's going to push against the, the valve lifters. So it's pretty straightforward on this side. The torque on these is 10 Nm. Again, crisscross pa pattern a little bit, don't do them all at once. One was ten Make sure you do them all. Yeah. Okay. Same situation with the intake. Clean it properly. And we look for that mark that is here. We do a sign on the other side. So here is the mark.
So the line is here. And uh, now this is going to be fun. Okay. Okay, so now we put in the um, intake camshaft and obviously, as you know, this is actually applying pressure to the valves. So how do we know that this is going to be correctly placed once we push it in with the, the covers? Well, the, the line that I put is there, which is obviously above the, the, this, this line here, the surface. But once you push it in, the line will be flat with the surface. But just to be sure, another way to check it is the hole here, that is th this little sign that will align with the dimple uh, or how you call it on the cover has to be exactly on the top in the middle. And then there is another way to uh, actually measure it. If you look in there, you see that line, it looks like a letter I on this pocket. That is pointing exactly, it's actually an arrow, it's pointing exactly to the middle of that link. So from there, we need to count the links to the other arrow on the other pocket, which should be pointing at the beginning, to the beginning of a link. So we want to count half and a, uh, four and a half links. It's going to be difficult. You need to pull out this quite a bit. Um, and then you will, you, you will be able to count them. Now we put on the caps, just be leading there, flat. Make sure the arrow that is on the caps is pointing towards the pocket. And that. Then we put in the bolts. Before we tighten everything, we need to fix the chain. I'm gonna show you how to do it now. That goes in. Now we make to sh need to make sure that this doesn't slip. So we'll take two zip ties and uh, we're gonna want to make this as tight as possible. Um, that's one around here. Make sure you pull it really good. The valves, they apply a lot of force to this, so um, you really want to get them tight. And the other one. And make this one really tight too. And now, with a little wrench, very little bit at the time, we go in. Ten newton meter like before. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, so now the line that I put there is perfectly flat with the surface. Same goes with the line on the exhaust. I'm 100% sure that these are right now. And uh, don't remove those zip ties until you have uh, placed back the, 
chain tensioner. So obviously, um, chain tensioner doesn't go back. Now I'm going to show how to uh, put this back in place. But to do that, you can use uh, one of these or a vise, or you can use one of these. Just clamp it in because um, what you will have to do is rotate and press. Rotate and press. Rotate. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. Take uh, this type of pliers here, just grab it by the tip, put it inside the vise, and start to squeeze a little. Spin, squeeze, spin, squeeze, spin, squeeze, spin. Don't use other pliers because they will uh, eventually um, start to slip. You want some pliers that wrap around the tip. This is a bit the tricky part now. There are two clips and um, the top one so the top one will be pushed inside here and we want to push it out all the way to the right and ideally so okay you want to push it to the right so that it goes into the groove that we're talking about the upper one so we push from the left to the right into the groove on the upper clip the lower clip we don't care about that one so we push it this way and then we release the vise Get somebody to help you so you can release the vise while holding it but once this is in the groove it's not going anywhere it's stuck there so i'm not going to install it actually because i i don't want to be wasting time i'm not going to use this one i'm going to use a manual one for this service we consider using original parts so um all you have to do install it the way it was with the, the torque that i'm going to tell you now so the torque for also for this bolt is going to be 10 newton meter so install it put a new seal make sure everything is clean um or use some silicone i don't know if you don't want to waste money Put it in there and then on the manual they will tell you that you have to uh, push pull the push ch uh, chain guide from here with the screwdriver so you have to remove the cover um, but in reality if you look in from the top if you look in there there is you can see the chain and you can see down there a piece of plastic you just push it against chain tensioner you, you use maybe a longer screwdriver or something long to make a little bit of leverage on, on here and it's very easy from here to access just push the chain tensioner will release and push against the chain and that's it okay so um, this is a manual chain tensioner that I got from eBay I think uh, a long time ago so I don't remember exactly um, which one it is it says MC motor parts they are much cheaper than the the original ones from Yamaha and one good thing is that they don't fail because once they there is no way you can push it back you know there is no way that the, the mechanism can fail um, you are going to use the same bolts it comes with the seal um, so you loosen it up you install it uh, you tighten it and we'll see how tight we will have to do it and then you lock it here with this one so let's do that so make sure all surfaces are clean we don't want to have any debris there let's lift this up and let's slide the tensioner in let's line the seal properly so we're going to tighten the bolts 10 newton meter now this one will be hard to access let's see so 
I'm going to hand tighten this for now. One and two. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. Uh, what we can do now is measure the valve clearance again. This is all as it should be. Um, we spin the engine and we check the valve clearance again. So for intake, we want to have 13 or more, I think it was. 13 is barely sliding here. Let's try 15. doesn't go 15 goes on one uh, and the other one I suppose is very close it's, it's probably 14 so it's this one intake is between 13 and 15 anyway so we are in range the exhaust needs to be uh, 22 or above so let's see if uh, let's see what happens with uh, 0 0.23 Let's see what this plate does. Slides barely through, barely through on both of them. So it's definitely above 23 and we're fine, it should be 22. Now we spin the engine. Um, 270 degrees, I think it was. And then another 71 degrees Let's see how 13 fits in here fits easy easy nearly too easy let's try 15 15 15 fits actually so let's try to go up to 16 Seven with nine makes sixteen. Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. So it's uh, fifteen. I uh, should be fourteen. Uh, obviously, we 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 disassemble the whole thing, so it's uh, it's not big deal that zero point zero one is off. But like, uh, it's a fifteen, which is good. Uh, sixteen is the upper limit, and uh, the valves are actually sh uh, the the gaps are shrinking, so that's all good. Twenty three fits. Twenty three fits on both. Okay, we got to the stage where we have to uh, put in the valve cover, and this is literally going to be the worst part of this entire job. Uh, just make sure everything is clean. Uh, I think. Um, I never done that before, so I will do a practice round where I try to put it in, push in the, the valve cover without the seal, just to see how I can get it in easy uh, with one movement. And once I'm confident, I will actually put the seal on. Um, I'm going to put back the all the electrical there a little bit against the bike because the weight of it is pulling on these cables, so they are going to be in the way. Uh, I think I can lift them up a little bit more if the panel is not pulling on them. So before we put the cover in, there are a couple of things that uh, I did. So I tried to pull this cable up as much as possible, this cable's here, uh, with the cable tie. And then as this other cable's here, um, I tried to fix them against, I pulled them against this corner here with the cable tie, trying to move it out from the way as much as possible, because when we put in the, the valve cover, it is going to push against this, uh, these cables here. Um, they are going to interfere with it. Uh, I also realized now that I have to put back the, the valve cover that uh, it would have been handy to remove the, the tank because at the end of the day, there isn't much left uh, to remove it. I mean, you have to unscrew it from here. These pipes are easily lifted out. The um, the petrol pipe here is disconnected anyway, so there is only two electrical 
connections and it's straightforward to remove it actually and that would make it much easier to slide in the cover and uh, look underneath uh, but uh, at this stage I think I will do it without without removing the tank so I'm going to use heat resistant silicon uh, just the normal heat resistant silicon that goes up 300 degrees in my case and I'll try to make uh, the mating points for the um, seals as sticky as possible don't exaggerate with the silicon So I've been reading many things on how to put this back together. There doesn't seem to be an agreed way to do it. Some people put this middle one first and then to the bike. And then the outside they put it on the cover. I don't know which one is better. I'll try to put everything now. And we'll see. No, normally, normally they tell you that you have to put silicone in these corners only. Um, which I'm gonna do. But I don't know, maybe I put some silicone all around because before there was some silicone all around. Just like a little. Most likely this is an overkill. I'm going to spread it now a little. There was silicon before as well. So here we go. I did apply some silicon to the middle as well. This is going to be fun. stuck <laughs> yeah I'm not sure what's going on for some reason okay Seems like the seals in the middle are in place all around. The only thing I worry about is that the chain got a little bit of silicon. I can feel that the rubber pieces are in place there, but we are going to check them now from that side. You can see that in the front it's all good. On the side here it looks good front looks good as well and this side the seal looks good as well we are ready to screw it down so there are these little washers or whatever they are that need to go back they are actually sealed washers
the cylinder cover head bolts are as you might expect 10 newton meter I got myself one of these little guys. I broke another one before. It's like 90 degree. Let's see if we manage. I broke one before when I was trying to take it apart, but I believe that um, it was tightened a little bit too much. So let's see what we get with this one now. And let's try to get 10 here now. And that also feels the same as the other ones. Not too loose. They should go down all together. Um, did a shitty job in doing that. This is 10. They're all at 10. Uh, valve cover is back. Okay, so the order here is uh, when you put them back to this bracket here, the order is the top is for the clutch, the middle one is for the brake lever, the master cylinder, and um, the third one at the very bottom is the one that goes from the ABS back to the front calipers to the front brake so this is the order one two three and uh, this aligns more or less the, the pipes on this side so that we can install them back into the clamp as well okay so there are two parts and uh, this needs to slide into here and then close and then you put the screw here and this will be sitting like that Holding the two pipes. Let's see if we can get that in. So there is a little plastic clip that there is no mention of it on the manual that I removed, and this is holding the these two cables, uh, which I don't know, a side stand probably sensor, I suppose. That's the direction it's going to. Uh, they just clamp them against the the lower hose here and this is going to hold it uh, we took out also this holder here which we are going to put back you will also have to bolt back here this holder here for the clutch um, for the clutch uh, tube hose um, in my case it's different I, I am just dropping it there because I have the extension mode as I mentioned earlier so just remember you have to do that one as well remember that we disconnected the battery and uh, this other thing here so they have to we have to feed them through here again Use a nice reusable zip tie to hold this all together nice and clean, including my heated grips. Uh, let's connect this one back. Remember that we left the bolt in so we didn't have to we keep track of it. This one back in here. Now we can put the electrical panel back. There are a bunch of bolts. Um, I don't know how many. I don't remember how many. We'll see. We'll figure this out now. Uh, this probably should be on that side of the bike. I guess. So we have first one here.
four. There's only four. Four. So we can put the spark plugs back. I'm using my amazing spark plug extraction tool, hoping it doesn't come apart. And the ones I put, uh, the ones I removed are only the the right ones on each cylinder, the right one on each cylinder. So just slide this in. So spark plugs are 13 newton meter. That's one done, and the other one on the right, straight in. Thirteen. I'm going to move these cables out of the way for now, which is actually where they're supposed to go later on. Just pull them out like that, and I'm going to install the ignition coils already with the silicon. To say this, um, the rubber on my ignition coils have seen better days. You obviously si using silicon is probably not the best idea, but. Um, Um, you can use some special grease. So I'm just putting silicone underneath here. Try to clean off a little bit the old one. And I squeeze it back in. And when it goes in you will see all the silicone coming out from the sides. Which is a good sign of knowing that it will seal. Ignition coil bolts are 10 Nm. Okay, push all these cables out of the way again, a little, to make space for the throttle body. Um, so I can remove this now. One and two. Um, this, the way I cover them obviously is not the best way. You can um, put uh, something around uh, on top of them and then just put a, an elastic and hold it in place, which will make a flat surface and everything will just fall off. Um, but it can maybe be a little bit annoying then on the, on the edge of the, the valve uh, cover here. So that's up to you. Uh, the, carb uh, the throttle bodies are a very delicate part. So if you are going to drop them or anything, Ah, you have to replace the whole set. Um, so you don't want to do that. And they're in. So there is this little lip here. And this will sit on top of the uh, ring here. And um, belt. So you won't be able to push it down any more than that. So let's tighten. These belts, the belts um, go at three newton meter. Uh, it's up to you if you want to mess around with this. I don't care. Uh, I don't even have a torque wrench that goes three newton meter. First thing I want to put back is the petrol. I cleaned it a little bit. Petrol pipe. Slide it in. Press two buttons. We'll slide in even more after you press the two buttons and then secure it by pushing forward this plastic tab. So then we have the white one which is uh, injector control and this is the air intake pressure sensor or how you call it. Uh, press in until, until you hear the click uh, and uh, underneath this one we have the injector. Press in and click and then on the other side we have the other injector, same color, press in and click. Before we connect all the other stuff, we have this hose that goes through the middle here and we just press the two metal things, the little belt and press it in. 
obviously I forgot to put the accelerator and the accelerator cables that would have been easier to do without fixing the throttle body so the accelerator is coming in from the top and you know which one it is because if you look here the decelerator is the one that should pull when you release the gas the throttle so this is the one on the front so this one is easy because you just slide it in from the side here and you bend it back and that's this one done uh, that's this one done that goes in here and you can just pull this one out The other one is going to be a bit of a nightmare. Accelerator. Same story. Sli ah, okay. The accelerator cable needs to be changed. Filament is broken. A little. Alright. And that's this one, and then you just put them back in there. Okay, now uh, there are two little bolts that I need to screw on. This is going to be a little, little bit tricky. Let's see. And this one is tight as well. Pipe goes back in. Obviously, I forgot to press the record button. Um, let's open this again. These two parts just slide around it. And uh, there is one little hole on the handlebars that uh, the, the front one needs to go inside uh, to hold it in place. And then you just press them together. And... You clump them together with the other part. Just very delicate. That might be like barely five newton meter. That's it. Uh, now we can plug in all the other stuff. Let's go to this big connector here. Push until you hear the click. I don't remember exactly what position this was, probably up here. Yeah, I'd say so. And this, there is a little hole, for this white connector here in the tube, uh, which we can use if I find it. Put this back in. So now there is the throttle servo motor uh, connector that is uh, um, the same as the ignition coils. So if we go here, uh, uh, we wrote it down what colors they should be. So we have uh, gray and green on one of the cables. It goes to the very left. Red and gray goes to ignition coil number two. Red and gray goes to ignition coil number two. Orange. No, not the ignition coil is red and yellow. So this goes here. This goes to the air box, from what I remember. Orange and green. Orange and green was the second one. That's correct. And so we, it's only the one left. And it's a bit of, in an awkward position for placement. Orange is back in. That was very tight. I think we are at the stage now where we can put the airbox back in leaf um, but I'm going to remove this guy here because I really hate this guy here you need some special tool uh, special type of pliers that I don't have and I hate this 
Uh, so this is what I'm going to use. Same as before, I clean a little bit the area. Slide this on. Just a little bit. And then the box just slides on top of the bottom body. It goes in. That's it. The clamps go back on. Uh, Again, probably just three newton meter. Three newton meter. Put the connector back. The air box. Air filter. Goes back in. The, not air filter, the bolts. On, one on each side. So remember to put the plastic cover back on, you can use a coin or something and just, there is a seal inside, anything flat will do, tighten it by hand and then you, there is this little bolt that you need to put back um, to the side here, which again, probably 10 newton meter or less by hand, we need to connect the negative Pull off the battery. Remember that we left it in again. Twenty five Newton meter. Okay, so uh, I think I did everything uh, that I can remember. I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, I did a test with the crankcase, crankshaft, to make sure that it's the engine is spinning without interference, which that's the main test. And the bike has been sitting for a month or so the ba and the battery is already weak so I'm not sure if I will be able to start it. So only one last thing, do and um, change the oil, change the oil filter um, so you can remove uh, eventually particles that uh, made their way into the engine. Okay, the bike is back together. I didn't show how I put it back together because I guess if you did the valve clearance you know how to do that at this stage. So this is the valve clearance on a Super Tenere uh, 1200. Uh, it's probably one of the hardest you can do because of the tight space that there is. Uh, but other than that, doing the valve clearance is not no, no rocket science. It's not so hard. Just follow the manual and you will be fine. Um, I didn't show how I adjusted the manual chain tensioner because it's not an OEM part. And I'm not, I don't want to recommend it. I don't know how reliable it is. I don't want you to destroy your bikes. Uh, please use uh, a 2014 OEM chain tensioner for a Super Tenere because in 2014 they have been upgraded so they are much more reliable um, and other than that um, so just follow the guideline that I have on this video for in installing the OEM part and ignore the manual chain tensioner um, 
if you want to go and install it, the way it works is that uh, you uh, tighten the knot, the, the tensioner until the rattling of the chain disappears and then you lock it. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, if you do the job, remove the tank, that's easy enough. It will save you a lot of time because there is more space to look at stuff, uh, access it. And um, so, yeah, uh, this is it. I hope you like the video. I hope it's going to be useful uh, for some of you. If you liked it, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you at the next one.